Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow YouTubers, Facebookians. This is a video blog for 9-24-2013. It's also somewhat of a rant tonight, so please bear with me, even if it's a little long. Now, I've been having a frustrated day. Now, mostly because of certain things that happened this morning. Now, I usually don't get frustrated. Uh, lately, I've been turning to my Bible because I've been troubled with things, with the world the way it's going and with all the stuff going on in the world like fake things and people being fake and etc and not truthful and etc kind of been bothering me as a minister so I've been trying also to play uh, Breath of Fire uh, 3 and I have Aaron helping me out so I can get through it I'm supposed to give him command of the PS3 so he could play Baseball, but when I told him about the little onion guy we have to level up, he decided to go level the onion guy up today. Yeah, but that's not about the onion guy, Pico. I finally shaved my legs. That's something new, by the way, but that's not part of my rant. So, but I feel a little more human. Now, let me get down to brass tacks. I've been frustrated today <coughs> for a few reasons. One is, I love someone very much. Now, I've known them almost almost three years going in December. And I'm telling you, sometimes I even get frustrated. You know, 33 months. And I care for them deeply. We always talk, we always laugh, you know. Certain things kind of bother me. Well, for one is, I was proposed to, you know. And I accepted the proposal of marriage. Now, I'm willing to get the ring next month. I had to go through my Skype information to find out a ring size. She said it was 6.5. Yeah, well, that wasn't what bothered me. What bothered me was the wedding wasn't set. We decided either July 4th or New Year's Eve or New Year's Day for the wedding. Now, that's what we decided, you know. Now, trying to figure out what to do after the wedding. Well, after the wedding is simple. You have a honeymoon. Frankly, I'm going to speak about a few things. All my life, all, all, all I've always wanted was to have a wife, to settle down, and to raise a family. I got that opportunity now. I don't want to lose it. I'm kind of irritated, um, you know, annoyed, um, frustrated at the fact that certain things well decisions well I have no clue okay all I know is I see these happy-go-lucky marriages on TV and it's like yes you do this and you do that I mean me and Aaron were having dinner tonight or before dinner I should say and then we were talking about other things but uh, before dinner while he was cooking we talked about marriage and how you know a marriage is like you wake up in the more you share the same bed with each other. You wake up in the morning, you coordinate who gets a shower and when, or you coordinate who gets what and when, or the computer or whatever you know, or you work together, you compromise. Um, another thing is you do the chores together. One does the dusting, the other one vacuums. One does the mopping, another one cleans the toilet, etc. The chores. Both go shopping for groceries, you know. Um, Stuff like that. I mean, uh, th that's how a marriage is. Um, you know, some say, oh, well, you know, the bills are this or that. Well, I'm going to break down a few things for me. That's why I said this video is going to be a little long. So bear with me. When I was growing up, I did some stupid stuff. You know, I got on my bike when my mom would go to sleep and it got dark. And I'd pedal it to a 7-Eleven trying to order some games and I needed a money order. Machine was broken, I pedaled to another 7 Eleven. When that machine was broken for money orders, I'd pedal to a third one. By the time I got home, you know, etc., I would be dog tired. I'd get up and I'd go to school. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, that's one of the things. Secondly, is, um, let's see, do I have it with me or? I guess not. Anyway, oh, here we go. For example, I have a color and black and white versions of this. This is a little TV. You're probably thinking, cool. Well, this little TV and other TVs was used in school pretty much. 
I'd pull it out and I'd watch TV in school. I was a rascal. Video games and TV. It's the way I wanted my life to be. I didn't care. Yeah. Now, you're thinking, okay, well, I couldn't graduate high school because of mainstream. I was put in special education. I can do special education things like phone book work, calling up on the phone, acquiring a few things here and there. They, they taught us a few things. Not all these skills. Some of them are life skills. Go shopping. Do this. Do that. That was the way school was. Special education. Now, I was called freak. I was called retard, geek, nerd. You name it. Oh, this girl wants you. This girl doesn't. This girl wants you. Well, there's only one girl in junior high school that wanted me. One. And I flogged it at the end of my own stupidity. She went into high school and I was going into eighth. But I'll tell that story later. Now, you're wondering, how does this affect what's going on in my life? Well, I'm venting. Well, how the person I want to marry, they proposed to me. I proposed a few years ago to them. Uh, they disappeared. They came back. And, and um, what I want to say is, I want to tell another story about my uncle. My uncle's disabled. No one thought he'd find anyone. You know, he's probably in his 50s now, maybe mid-50s. But anyways, here's the story. He met a woman who had the mind of a four or five-year-old. Yeah, but a body of a, an adult. Anyways, they got together, they started courtshipping, you know, dating, stuff like that. Eventually, they got married. They had a, one son. Well, when he got married, he moved into her house with her parents, her mom. Well, her mom stayed around until my grandmother died. They took his inheritance, bought a house in North Dakota. From what I understand, when she died of obesity, I think it was, overweight, she was like, I mean, dang... Nice lady, by the way. Good heart. But anyway, she was huge. Eventually, I found out recently, they're on this side of the mountains. They moved from North Dakota back to Washington. I think they're with her father now, who's their trustee and payee, or whatever you call it. Moral of the story? Simple. They might be in an apartment. They might be in a house. The bottom line is, them two is uh, simple. Them two live together, and, you know, maybe with her father or whatever. Me? My opinion is, I have no clue what to do or how to choose a, uh, what to do after the honeymoon. I mean, raise a family, yes. However, I'd like the child with me. If they want to move, stay in North Dakota or Kentucky or wherever their parents are, you know, I'm a little shaky at the moment. Then I would like to have my child with me after birth because I'll raise my child because, frankly, I want the child to experience fishing and hunting and stuff like that, you know. Um, but it's just, you know, up to the, the, the other parent. I mean, it's not about me taking custody of the kid. What I'm trying to say is I have no clue when it comes to that type of decision. I mean, I really don't. I mean, all I know is I live right here. I've been told my videos are very influential. I've been told I have talent talking on video. I have uh, people telling me it's my talent that I can actually speak my mind on, on webcam and uh, in front of YouTubers. So, truthfully, all I know is for the honeymoon, I was thinking Disneyland or Disney World. I can't get away with Cedar Point because, well, the, the future missus does not like thrill rides. Right. So, I've been trying to work with her. However, she says don't send the ring because we don't know what's going on at the wedding. Well, there is things called an engagement ring. An engagement ring is different from a wedding ring and vice versa, blah, blah, blah. I don't know much about the engagement rings. I'll have to do research on the reasons, the whys, and etc. and the blah, blah, blahs. That's my job to do research. But I'm getting to the point that I want to get to my story. Is, when it comes to marriage, me being frustrated... She said she wanted to stay with her parents. Now, when you're married, I have no clue. I mean, President Truman's own wife uh, stayed with her mom and Harry S. Truman, and he stayed with her, too. Yeah, he was president. She stayed in Missouri. 
he was running the running Washington D.C. without his, the first lady, pretty much. But this isn't about this or that. Now I don't know how it would work out being married. One in one state, one in another. I mean, I don't know. I live my I lived already to the point of I pay my bills. I uh, enjoy myself. And, well, frankly, everything's peachy. Now, you're probably wondering how well this goes. Well, in one of my videos with Living Simply and Free, or Living Simply and uh, Fun, we were talking about my mother. Now, my mother, she wanted us, after I met Aaron, wanted us to move to uh, uh, another state or... Uh, Somewhere where I could live in subsidized housing while well, she moved to Texas. She wanted to see if she I could live by myself, but she also wanted to go down because she was tired and she was retiring because she was sick and no one t told us she was sick. No, not my sister didn't even know she was sick. No one did. Three years later, after I lived by myself, I talked to my mom on the phone. I'm like, yeah, everything's great, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I did this, blah, blah, blah. This is great, blah, blah, blah. Mom came back. Stayed with my uncle and then came to the apartment complex I lived in so I could take care of her till she died. When she died, I told mom I can still do it. Before she died, I told her I can manage pretty much pretty good. I mean, sometimes I got out without Aaron and I went and visited her by myself at the hospital. You're thinking, oh, that's nice. Well, story is, is I live by myself, okay? When my mom was around, I'll tell you one reason why I did not want to leave my mom's side. Besides being a mama's girl. Okay? Being transgendered, yes, I can say mama's girl. One is, I lived in Australia from 18 to tw uh, 19 to 23, I think it was, or 22 anyways. I lived there for four years, anyways, something like that. Now let me put it to you this way. Four years, I didn't have any worries in the world. Before then... I didn't have any worries either. Mom's boyfriend and them took care of everything. I just sat back with my paycheck before I left Australia as a janitor because of disabilities. Couldn't handle the job anymore. And because they accused me of stealing. That. I. Uh, just wanted to say. That because of it, the missus, Miss Fiona, took care of me and I didn't have to worry about bills or gas or water. I didn't even think about bills. When I came home after an emergency, I didn't think of bills either then. Yeah, no bills. None whatsoever. From 2002 to 2005, I had very minimal bills. I paid my rent. Mom had to take care of the rent. She took care of the groceries, she took care of the water, she took care of the electricity, she took care of the cable, if we wanted cable. One day, when I moved out, I got into this place, water was covered, electricity was covered, all including my rent. Just gave a 30% of, 20 or 30% of my check, no problem. Six years, had no utilities. Now... More responsible. I go up every month. And this is a big deal. A lot of people, including Aaron, he didn't like he didn't want change either. A lot of people don't want change. They could stay with their parents, as Aaron would say, and freeload off them and not pay rent, then what's the point of uh even thinking of uh settling down or having a family when you can freeload off people? Me, when I moved over here because I was forced out of my old apartment. For the first few months, I was struggling because I had to put a huge deposit down on my electric bill. I had to put a huge deposit down on my uh, rent every month for three months, including the deposit. Now, my deposit is paid for. My uh, rent's paid every month. And guess what? Yeah. Every month I get up and every month I sit down at my desk or my other desk behind me and I go through the bills and I say, oh, 
the electric bill came in. Oh, it's this much amount of money. Okay. Or um, the phone bill comes in. I run down and get a money order. Or if I have a layaway, I go and I cut a money order. Or I go and do money gram. Why? Simple. Pay it off. Then I sit back and say, oh, this bill's here, a medical bill. And it goes. Out it goes. Oh, I have this? No problem. A lot of people are afraid of that. You know, they're afraid of moving because of this or that reason. I mean, heck, for some reason, people can be afraid when I move in so with someone or get, get married with someone, then they'll lose their Medicaid or their food stamps or they'll lose their money or they'll gain some extra money because they're married or whatever. Point is, is sometimes you got to sacrifice. However, you need to look at the big picture before you decide to sacrifice. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, in my opinion, I'm frustrated because everything's lined up to for me to travel soon. Um, they'll have their ring already by then before I travel. Yet, the thing is, is... I have no clue. All I know is when you're married, you're supposed to live with each other. But I can't move out of this place yet till my lease is up. My lease is up in December. That means i got to re-up it for another year. And since I'm going to be traveling out to uh, her and doing another trip for the wedding, I cannot travel until 2015 or to move in 2015. So that's a big sacrifice. I have to be here unless there's a way I can transfer to another management uh, uh owned or uh, run management company that we're with now that can transfer me to one of their build uh other buildings yeah so uh with that said you get the idea i'm kind of frustrated because i don't know what to do all i know is i care for the girl very much and i'm always trying to make her happy and etc. I just don't know how to handle this particular situation because I've never been into a situation where I had to worry about well what happens after a wedding. After a wedding usually you get uh, you go to a honeymoon and afterwards you go back to the person's residence but if the person wants to be close to their parents well I don't know. All I suggested was travel there periodically go see family then or pick up the phone or Skype them every day or, uh, I don't know. So, for some of you it's still with me, I'd like you to give me some suggestions, comments, and etc. in the box. Because I have no clue what to do. And frankly, I'm just frustrated today. And on top of being frustrated, I'll tell you why. Just today I went to make some coffee and the coffee pot did not work properly. Yeah. It was like, broken. You know, it filled up, overflowed, filled up half the craft, the rest went all over the place. I had to clean it up. It was frustrating. Business email was positive today, another business email was negative, and some other emails didn't come in. Frustrated. But the main thing is, is I will get through this with God's help. With that said, please add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments in the box if you like. And please add me as a friend if you like. Thank you, and have a nice day.